My friends, reality is completely broken. And there is only one thing you need to know to understand that this is true. Beyond any reasonable doubt, mainstream media is defending Fox News. Wait, wait, what? Okay, first of all, a lot of people are probably saying, Tim, Fox News is mainstream media. It's just the conservative version. Okay, okay, fine. But the point is, there's like one conservative mainstream channel, and it's Fox. And Fox is attacked relentlessly. But something funny happened. Newsweek published an article defending Fox News and claiming the ratings aren't going down. They are. Fox News' ratings are going down, and it's kind of bad. And CNN has even pointed this out, that Fox News viewers are fleeing to Newsmax and OAN, but mostly Newsmax. And this could be because Newsmax has said they're not going to call the race for Joe Biden just yet, even though it's looking more and more like Donald Trump is losing this fight. I mean, look, to be fair, as it stands, he is. A lot of Trump supporters are saying that he wants to get to SCOTUS. And sure, perhaps a lot of people think Amy Coney Barrett, Brett Kavanaugh, Clarence Thomas, Alito are going to help Trump make his claims. Trump says the big lawsuit is coming. OK, you know, when we see it. But I'll tell you this, man. Rudy Giuliani said, as soon as we get a fair ruling, it'll change everything, which means in his federal lawsuits, in his state lawsuits, of course they want to win. It is bad that they're getting dismissed and booted out, but they could make it to the Supreme Court and things could change. Literally, that's how the Supreme Court works. You file an appeal and it goes up and up and up and then eventually you get your final decision. So maybe that will happen. It's entirely possible. Maybe a long shot, maybe not. Maybe many of these federal judges are previous, you know, appointed by previous administrations and they don't like Trump. And maybe Trump has allies on the Supreme Court. Now that's playing politics, but maybe it'll happen. Or maybe Amy Coney Barrett, Brett Kavanaugh, Clarence Thomas, Alito, Roberts, they'll have clarity of thought. And they'll say, you know, these previous rulings are all wrong. Donald Trump is the true winner. I'm not entirely convinced. But there is another really big lawsuit coming uh, that was filed recently. It is seeking to get mail-in voting deemed unconstitutional in Pennsylvania as a violation of the, uh, well, it's a violation of the Pennsylvania's constitution. That could have a serious impact on the Pennsylvania results. But at this point, it is, it is, it is beyond down to the wire. And the fact that Trump has opened up transition to Joe Biden says to me, it's not looking good. But you know what? It's plain as day that I know if I come out and I say these things, the, the, the people over at the Donald start posting memes about me saying, you know, I'm a cuck or whatever, a bald cuck and all that stuff, because I'm not going to blindly follow just saying Trump is winning because I would be lying if that was the case. Right now, people are going after Tucker Carlson. His ratings have gone down. Fox News, ratings have gone down. And, right, and, and also even Rush Limbaugh is criticizing Trump's legal team for, for coming out with these bold and grandiose assertions and not having the evidence to back it up. At a certain point, you've got to recognize when people are taking you for a ride. And I'm not talking about Trump. I think Trump really wants to win. And there are a lot of people saying, no, Trump's just trying to milk donations out of his supporters. Eh, I don't know. He's he put three million down on Wisconsin. Now, I think Trump is doing everything in his power to win by any means necessary, which is why I won't count him out. Although I'll say to you, I've been saying it the entire time. It, it is in all likelihood a Joe Biden presidency. And that's kind of hilarious. And if this guy won. That's crazy. But there is a possibility. If, if, if Trump was making claims the moon was made out of cheese, I'd be like, there's no possibility that's true. If Trump is saying there's a constitutional trick shot method to, to still winning the presidency, and he's got a bunch of lawsuits going through the courts, well, you still have right now, there's, there's a lawsuit entering uh, in Pennsylvania, which could see mail-in ballots be deemed unconstitutional. Who knows what will happen? And the Arizona governor is saying he's not going to accept the results if there's pending litigation. That means Arizona seems to be, it's possible Trump could block certification there. And as much as the left wants to say it's over, Trump concede. I'm not there yet. Okay, listen, maybe this lawsuit in Pennsylvania will work. Maybe Trump will make it to the Supreme Court. While I certainly think the odds are getting slimmer and slimmer and slimmer, and it was already bad for him to begin with, I'm not, a, I'm not, I'm not counting them out. Okay, what I mean by that is I'm not going to bet money that Donald Trump is going to win, even though the odds are like it's a value bet, right? I'm just saying that it's, it's a greater than 0% chance Trump could figure something out. And we've seen him defy the odds before. And just based on how things have gone this year and how crazy 2016 was, I just think, you know, 
you better go buy your lottery tickets. But I digress. Let's talk about Fox News. Their ratings are collapsing. And there are a lot of people that don't like Fox News for one simple reason. Fox News lies. Isn't that really funny? That's what the left has been saying over and over again. And conservatives were watching it saying, no, Fox News is actually doing a better job. Truth be told, going back several years, Fox News has been doing a better job. Brett Baer's wonderful, for instance. I think Cavuto's kind of bad, actually. And, you know, as much as I think Juan Williams doesn't read enough news, I appreciate that The Five has him on so you can have this clash of perspectives, even though he's like kind of the only Democrat guy. But Fox News used to give us uh, a fair shake. I mean, Tucker Carlson told us about the Covington kids properly, told us about Kyle Rittenhouse properly. But guess what's happening now? I turn on Fox News and you get you get something like John Roberts saying, There's no evidence of voter fraud. And I said, well, that's just an outright lie. I'm not saying Trump has proven that he lost the election due to voter fraud. And that seems to be the only distinction that exists in mainstream and in the the mainstream news universe. Either voter fraud exists, therefore Trump was defeated unjustly or uh, a voter fraud doesn't exist at all. So Fox News has John Roberts saying there's no there's no voter fraud. Well, what happens if you're a Trump supporter? You've literally seen the sworn affidavits and there's a ton of them. You've seen the mathematical anomalies and you've seen what the voter integrity fund has produced. You're going to say, dude, Fox, there's a lot of evidence. There's like there's there's a ton. And and some of it's even hard data like voter integrity fund. How are you going to come out and say there's none? That's that's BS. That's why I think most Trump supporters probably went to Newsmax. Now, what what you're going to hear from the likes of Brian Stelter and The Atlantic is that, you know, Trump's base lives in paranoid fake world reality or something like that. And they, they, they're they desperately looking to cling to some narrative that Trump really won. Those people exist. They're like Trump screaming, you know, Trump really won. This election was stolen and all that stuff. And uh, there's a lot there's a lot of Trump supporters that believe that. But I think most of the people who probably went to Newsmax were just like Fox News isn't telling me the truth. So I turned on Newsmax the other day and I was actually impressed. I do think they go way over the top for Donald Trump, some of their personalities. But uh it wasn't, it, 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 for the most part, wasn't fake news, fake reality. When I turn on Fox News, why were they telling me there's no evidence? Why won't John Roberts say the Trump campaign is filing suits on const- the constitutionality of, uh, of some of, the, of these ballots? They're challenging many of these ballots. They're not alleging fraud. However, the Trump campaign has publicly stated outside of the courts that there was widespread fraud, though their lawsuits haven't asserted that for the most part. And while there is certainly evidence of fraud, meaning signs or indications that fraud may have occurred, we don't have an investigation or hard evidence determining whether or not it was widespread enough to alter the election. That's reality. That's the reality. And like I always say, we should be investigating. But you know what's creepy is that we're not. That freaks me out. The fact that we've got sworn affidavits being disregarded, thrown in the trash, these people have signed, uh, uh, signed these documents under pen- penalty of perjury. Doesn't matter, apparently. No one's going to investigate. Nobody cares. The machine doesn't like Trump, and the machine just wants to keep on churning, and they found their way to move forward. So th- whether it's Bill Barr or anybody else, they don't care. They're not going to, to overturn this. And we've already heard from many people, even Carl Rove, saying they're not going to change this. It's not going to happen. And I think that's extremely likely, and I've said so every step of the way for this I've gotten a bunch of people saying, Tim is a bald cuck who's, you know, giving in to a Biden presidency. Hey, man, look, I am just somebody who's telling you that the information we have and my thoughts on it. I'm not instructing people to do anything. It's possible Trump wins. It's a fact. And we've got lawsuits pending. And tonight on the IRL podcast, we have a big show. So I, you, you get ready for this. 8 p.m. tonight live. We've got uh, we're going to be sitting down with a, 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 a plaintiff in one of the key suits. Which is gonna, it's going to be big. At least I'm hoping we'll see how it plays out. Sometimes people cancel. Take a look at this, though, from Newsweek. Fact check. Are Fox News's daytime ratings collapsing as Trump claims? Newsweek defending Fox News. Oh, I've seen too much. I can't. You know what? I just don't believe it. They say the claim Fox News daytime ratings have completely collapsed. Weekend daytime even worse. Very sad to watch this happen. But they forgot what made them successful. What got them there? They forgot the golden goose. The biggest difference between the 2016 election and 2020 was Fox News. Trump tweeted on November 12th, 2020. Yeah, well, today Trump retweeted Randy Quaid, who was saying like the same thing. And it was just so weird. Anyway, 
the, the facts. Well, let me just show you the, the ruling. False. It's not surprising that Fox News ratings would drop during speeches by the Democratic winners. But having the highest rated Fox and Friends ever and the network finishing number one for the 17th consecutive quarter in daytime suggests they're not collapsing. Why is Newsweek defending Fox News? Ladies and gentlemen, I give you November 20th score, score, uh, scoreboard. Fox News wins total primetime viewers. MSNBC wins total day viewers. CNN wins adults 25 to 54. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Fox News wins total primetime viewers. But what about day? MSNBC wins daytime? What's the claim from Donald Trump? Their daytime ratings have collapsed? Okay. Well, I, I don't it, it's I don't have one to one, you know, different days, different ratings. But check this out. On Friday, Cavuto had one hundred and seventy seven thousand in the in the ratings in the twenty five to, to 50, uh, 54 demographic. One hundred and seventy seven. Jake Tapper had four hundred and seventy six beating out both uh, Fox News and MSNBC. But Wallace on MSNBC had three hundred and thirty eight thousand in the key demo. Cavuto got 1.36 million at 4 p.m. Jake Tapper got two and MSNBC got 2.4. So all in all, MSNBC beat out everybody. MSNBC beat out in daytime, uh, daytime ratings. Well, I, I, I'm assuming they lumped that in. But let me jump to Monday, November 2nd. So look, Mondays and Fridays are very different. I understand this. But the point was, I wanted to show just before the election, You've got a lot of people really hyped up. They're really eager. They want to know what's about to happen. And then you have after the election where people are still, for the most part, trying to see what's going on, but kind of moving on. Cavuto at 4 p.m. had 590 in the key demo. I'm not here to claim that Mondays and Fridays are the same or that pre and post election are identical. I'm just going to show you the comparables between CNN and MSNBC. Wallace 340, comparable. Jake Tapper 484, comparable. Cavuto 590, not comparable. OK, look, Jake Tapper had 476. Wallace had 338 on November 20th, about the same as they did on November 2nd. But Cavuto has tanked in the ratings. The five had 402 to the Blitzers 512. And on Monday, the five had 849. So still doing well as they move into evening ratings. OK, the point is. Fox News' ratings are absolutely down. On, on November 2nd, Tucker Carlson had 6.3 million to Hayes' 2.6. Hannity had 5.9 to Maddow's 3.7. Now, this is prime time. We're getting, you know, we're getting out of the daytime claim. Take a look at this. If we go to Friday, Rachel Maddow and Hayes' ratings are pretty much the same. Carlson and Hannity have dropped by around 3 million viewers. So, Newsweek, why, why, why are you putting out defense of false? Fox News' is, is ratings are fine. They're not fine. They're not. Oh, well, they said daytime, to be fair. The point is, they're absolutely tanking. People are leaving Fox News. You know, I got to say, it is kind of funny to watch. Check this out. Tucker Carlson claims 2020 election was rigged against Trump in plain view as he bemoans untrustworthy electronic voting systems and accuses Dems of conspiring with media and big tech to swing race in Biden's favor. You know, I, I, I don't trust Tucker all that much anymore, to be completely honest. I thought he was he was the best guy on TV in terms of opinion and politics. Um, not a big fan of Hannity, but I don't trust Tucker anymore. You know why? First, I've never I've never subscribed to the theories put forth by Sidney Powell. And I made some comments about that on Twitter and got ratioed by people saying, how dare you, Tim? Uh, sorry, if you're going to if you're going to come out and claim Dominion hacking in Venezuela and all this stuff like you got you got to come out with evidence on that stuff. Not the only one. Uh, 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 Rush Limbaugh saying the same thing. OK, so look, if I'm ahead of Rush Limbaugh, come on, spare me. But but Tucker Carlson on his show said he reached out to Sidney Powell, asked for evidence, and she presented none. Sidney said she did present evidence, a sworn affidavit, as well as offering up a mathematical expert to explain the data and mathematical anomalies. That is evidence. Why did Tucker say it didn't exist or she didn't present any? I believe Sidney Powell probably did send him that stuff because they've talked about it before. Why wouldn't she? And I've seen some of these affidavits. I've seen many of the affidavits. Certainly she could be like, here's some evidence. I believe it's very likely just a simple solution. Then the simple solution as to why Tucker said this, as some people have, have claimed, maybe Tucker was a little salty. She wouldn't come on his show. 
He wanted her on the show to talk about these claims. He wanted to get the scoop on the evidence. And when he couldn't get anything, when he couldn't get her on the show, he said, well, she wouldn't give me, we would have given her a full hour. I don't trust Tucker because after this, and he saw a mass exodus and he started getting, getting you know, flack from Trump supporters. He immediately does this bit where he's like, we do think there was problems. We do. We do. We think this, please. And now he's doing the segment where he's like, it was rigged. No, I, I agree with you. Don't leave. That's what it feels like. You know, we had on the IRL podcast some lefties. We, we have some uh, uh, people. They're not staunch conservatives. We have some libertarians. And uh, I get some thumbs down. But for the most part, look, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to do my thing. I'm going to tell you what I can what what what, what I can prove. I'm going to I'm going to tell you what I can't prove. I I base my decisions off of what I think to be probabilities. So right now what I would say is like Donald Trump has a chance to win. It's extremely low. It's in the single digits and probably the extremely low single digits. The very very low single digits if anything. But it exists. So I I think it's 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 stupid to come out and be like I know for a fact. And I've definitely come out in the past saying I know for a fact. Yeah, oh, I'm not perfect. But if they're going to come out and make these large, grandiose claims about Venezuelan Smartmatic and its subsidiary and Dominion buying its subsidiary and then these weird connections, it might be true. Conspiracies exist. I mean, a conspiracy, the only difference between a conspiracy and running a business is, are you breaking the law? So yeah, conspiracies exist. Like, what you got to understand about a conspiracy theory is that like, if a bunch of dudes get together and conspire on like selling drugs, it's a conspiracy. It's like criminal, criminal conspiracy. When people start a business, they get together, have meetings and discuss how they're going to run the business. So long as it's legal, it's not a conspiracy. You get how that works. That means when people have meetings and say things like we want to do this to win the election and it's on the up and up, well, then you're just having a planning meeting. But if you do that while also saying, here's what we're going to do and it's going to be illegal. Well, now you're engaging in a criminal conspiracy. These things can happen. I just don't think it's necessary. I think the big issue here is actually what Tucker Carlson said. I've said for quite some time, they changed the rules the, uh, 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 with mail-in voting. And so what ended up happening is that they gave themselves a month plus to go around and knock on doors, tell people to vote. And we even had uh, the quartering. Jeremy Hambly was on the IRL podcast last night, and he was talking about how someone went to his house that they got sent absentee ballots they never requested because apparently you only need a name and a birthday to get it. I think that is the, the, the principal path by which Democrats actually won this and got millions more votes. And it's probably why it's probably why many of these things were just for Biden. I think what we saw was probably ballot harvesting. And that's the, 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 the uh, I guess that's the simple, uh, the simple answer. Now, I think there was impropriety. I think there was fraud. Is it widespread enough? Honestly, I don't know. But let me show you this. This is from the Daily Mail. I'm not entirely sure I trust it when they talk about uh, election stuff. Giuliani says he exaggerated a little bit when he said there were more votes than citizens in Detroit after Trump made the claim part of his failed bid to overturn election defeat. Donald Trump tweeted, in Detroit, there are far more votes than people. Nothing can be done to cure that giant scam. I win Michigan. Giuliani said, I'm exaggerating a bit. He immediately admitted to host Lou Dobbs. But all you have to do is look at statistical data and you can see the fraud was rampant and out of control. The city of Detroit probably has had more voters than its citizens. The president's personal lawyer spearheading the election told Fox Business on Monday. Probably. I'm exaggerating a bit. OK, how much? And do we just blindly trust everything they're saying? And uh I'm going to go with Rush Limbaugh on this one. I think it's funny because these lefties are like, Tim, you're just millennial Rush Limbaugh. Me. OK, sure. Whatever. I don't know. I don't care. Rush. Rush. I've, I've heard Rush say some crazy stuff, but uh, I've heard him say some regular stuff. And it, I don't really listen to Rush Limbaugh. But Rush, Rush Limbaugh slams Trump's legal team for making wild accusations of Democrat led global conspiracy to steal the election without offering a shred of evidence during much hyped press conference. Led by Rudy Giuliani alongside attorney Sidney Powell, the, the legal team made wild claims at the press conference on Thursday, claimed the Democrats had stolen the election in an alleged global plot with Cuba, Venezuela and China, which used Dominion voting machines to change Trump votes to Biden ones. Monday during his radio show, Limbaugh laid into the team for holding a much hyped press conference with nothing to back them up. You know what, man? I just think there are a lot of people 
who want to fight to the bitter end. And I absolutely respect that. I think sh- I think Trump should not concede under any circumstances because that's the game they've been playing the whole time. I think that the Democrats, I've been saying for quite some time that they've cheated. And what I mean by that is they changed the rules the last minute to favor themselves. It's the easiest way to explain it. They made the, they rigged the game in such a way it would benefit them. In fact, I had Sean Parnell, who's running for Congress, uh, and uh, I believe they've called the race for Connor Lamb, so he presum- projected not to win. But he said the Democrats are doing these things because they think it's going to help them win. And they're right. It's really simple. First and foremost, there is tons of evidence of fraud. That's a fact. I don't know if it's widespread enough to actually have impacted the, the, the total result of the race. There are strange mathematical anomalies, and there are questions that must be answered. Like when when they say these big dumps came in for Joe Biden at 4 a.m., the mainstream media on the left says, we all knew that was going to happen. They were complaining about it. If you make us count absentee ballots at the last minute, we're going to dump all the results at once, and people are going to say it's not fair. Yeah, but why are they 98% for Joe Biden? That's not the case. It's supposed to be like 70% for Joe Biden, but they're all for Joe Biden. The theory among the right is that there was an, an, an algorithm, a system in place where they knew how many votes they needed. And when they realized Trump was winning by massive margins, they started cranking out votes like crazy, which skewed the results. To put it mildly, if 2% of the uh, you know, 148,000 ballots were for Trump, that means they expected Trump to be, lose, uh, to be uh, getting way less votes. And they had to print that many to overcome. So they were expecting 70 to 30. I'm not saying that's true. I'm saying that's the the general theory coming from the right. I can say these anomalies must be answered for. And anybody who says we shouldn't investigate is probably trying to pull a fast one or is lying to you. We need to get to the bottom of these questions. And uh, no matter how long it takes, I believe the Republicans, should they retain the Senate, should absolutely launch a special investigation and go after every single one of these ballots. You want want to know what? You want to know why? We did it for Russiagate, and that was kind of mind numbing. But now we actually have sworn statements from regular people all across the country. And it's probably a really good idea for us to make sure our election systems are secure. Anyway, in the end, Everything's going to be changing rather dramatically right now. We went through four years of the Trump bump media psychosis. It can't last forever. It won't last forever. And it seems extremely likely, and it, and it always has, that it's going to be a Joe Biden presidency. Joe Biden's now got buildbackbetter.gov, I think it's called. What do you think is going to happen to the media with no Trump? I am, uh, I'm looking forward to this. I really am. What, what many of you need to understand is that Almost the, the through line of all of my content has always been ragging on the media. The reason why Democrats get roped up in that is because the media is the Democrats propaganda arm for the most part. I mean, what, I mean, what I mean is like these big media outlets are just lying endlessly for Democrats. So when I complain about the media over and over again, I then it's the, the Democrats have gone insane, too. It's kind of like interlaced. What's going to happen now? I will probably keep doing exactly as I'm doing, because while Joe Biden starts blowing up kids in the Middle East and the media starts lying about it and covering it up, I'm going to keep calling them out. I'll tell you what's going to be funny, though. Mainstream media will have nothing to talk about. So they're going to start talking about, I don't know, Mickey Mouse or whatever, the hottest celebrity trends and gossip, and their ratings are going to plummet. We already saw two of the founders of Vox quit, go off on their own. But I'll tell you the funny thing. How much do you want to bet that now my channel is going to start seeing moderate conservatives and progressives watching. You know why? Because now they all hate Biden. And that's probably what I'm going to be ragging on because Joe Biden was a a warmonger VP, crooked crony, corporate politician, and the left voted him in and he's going to be awful, and the media is going to lie to defend him. So when we get more conflict in the Middle East and more of the, of the garbage that, that Joe Biden's going to produce and lockdown trash, there's going to be a lot of people who don't like him. And it's not just going to be conservatives this time. It's going to be progressives as well. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I will see you all then.